fact, um, I feel a little bit embarrassed to um, talk in front of you today after this wonderful performance of this band. So I find it difficult to keep pace with uh, <coughs> the level of entertainment that you've got. I've, uh, I also uh, feel embarrassed to talk after this, the wonderful speakers of this morning because uh, I find it difficult to speak without sounding repetitive uh, in some way. Uh, the other reason of my embarrassment is that I prepared three jokes and after hearing uh, the deputy Fatih um, uh, Khuyel giving you a, a great uh, uh, entertainment, I, I just uh, pull out my jokes and I will not use them, but I will use one. So, uh, so I'll tell you uh, an anecdote uh, and a joke of how I got here. So the reason why I am uh, in front of you today is my title. So where's my title? Uh, Abdu, uh, okay. So, uh, so a, couple of year, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got contacted by one of the organizers of this event, uh, Anissa Labaz. So she contacted me and she said, Sir, I am very grateful for you because you changed my life by giving me a teacherly advice. You remember what you taught me? I said, what? She said, you told me to have the courage and say no. So I remembered that in, uh, when I was teaching at Ernest uh, Lagwat, uh, I taught them to have the courage and say no because sometimes out of, out of shyness or out of uh, embarrassment we say yes to things and then we overcommit and underdeliver. Has it happened to you? So sometimes uh, we, we say yes to people and then we uh, regret that because we, in our culture, we uh, feel uh, 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 obliged to say yes to things. Sorry. So uh, she said, you taught us this thing and this, changed, this has changed my life. And I have this wonderful opportunity of training uh, a tourist agency, I guess, if I remember. And she said, I am having this opportunity to gain some money for my organization, so, but I'm going to say no because I feel I'm not ready. So I responded to her, I said, no, I want you to say yes. So she was a bit confused. She said, why did you change your, your mind? You told us to say no, and now you are telling us to say yes. He said, I was wrong. I found out that you have to say yes to opportunities because this is the key to my successes, as it were. So she said, uh, okay, sounds good. And now I have this wonderful uh, event, Wikistage Jelva, and I want to invite you to this event. Would you come? I said, no. At that level, I can see that she was really com uh, confused. She said, you teach us to say yes, uh, to say no, and now you change your, uh, your mind and you, you, you teach us to say Yes, and when I invite you, you say no. So out of embarrassment, and I wanted to walk the talk and be the teacher, the example, a role model. So I said yes, and here I am in front of you. I know that you did not get the joke. So, um, so uh, my name is Ahmed Abdel Hakim Hashlev. I was, uh, as I was introduced, and uh, I am an education specialist and social activist. And I have a diverse background. I, uh, uh, I specialized in education, and also I have some uh, education in the nonprofit sector. I have an, uh, a certificate of advanced study in the, uh, uh, the leadership and management of NGOs. And also I have another certificate of advanced study from the University of uh, Tufts in Boston uh, in nonviolent conflict. So uh, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, today about two or three ideas that I think they're, uh, they're relevant because I think that the plus that they can bring to you today is uh, ideas, <laughs> ideas that you can relate to because I think that in the audience I have friends, neighbors, uh, students and th people that uh, share with me my background. So I want to tell you today that no matter where you, you come from, no matter what, what you have or what you don't have, you can make it big if you say yes to opportunities. So in 2000, uh, so the reason why I changed my uh, mind and I um, uh, started to say yes to opportunities because I regret every time I say no to opportunities. So uh, in 2012, I got a call from the UN and they told me that you want, uh, we want you to represent Algeria in the UN. 
So uh, I was having like a lot of on my plate. I had a job offer from World Learning. I will tell you uh, the story uh, later. And I had many things and I felt I was not ready for this, uh, this opportunity. So I said, no, I want you to defer this opportunity for next year. So next year, they did not call me because they were not interested in an Algerian representative in this program. So uh, I was lucky later on to get the same opportunity in 2014, but in 2013, I got a call also from the University of Tats for the, the, the program, uh, uh, the, is the Certificate of Advanced Study in Nonviolent Conflict. And I said yes, and I attended the program. After that, the program vanished. Nowadays, there is no program uh, of uh, nonviolent conflict in Tufts University. If I said no for this opportunity, I would, never, I would have never been able to, uh, to do this program. So, uh, another story that uh, 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 later on in 2015, I got uh, a, a Skype interview. I was in the Czech Republic. And uh, I got this opportunity to be a course scholar in Switzerland. So, I had this friend. And uh, this is why I want you to be surrounded by positive people who tell you to do things, not uh, people who discourage you from doing things. And this friend, he was telling me, we want to tour Europe, we wanted to go to Germany and Holland and other places and uh, enjoy ourselves. And I had this Skype video and he, the person was literally behind the laptop. And he was telling me, no, don't accept this opportunity. We need to go and enjoy ourselves in Europe. And I said to the, the women, who uh, later on became a close friend of mine, uh, she said, uh, uh, would you consider to come? I said, uh, no. She said, are you sure? And I was looking at the person behind the laptop and he was saying, no, 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 don't accept. I said, no, I'm not sure, I'm coming. So I went and this program was the best of all life. It changed my life and it in introduced me to wonderful ideas, to wonderful people. And the network that I gained from this program is life changing for me. So there are people in the audience who would say, but I'm not the type of person who gets calls and invited, uh, who, who, got invited uh, who gets invited to opportunities like this. So my answer to that is, if you don't uh, get opportunities to say yes to, you need to ask for opportunities. In 2016, I was in New York, in, uh, in Syracuse University, and th th there is this um, a wonderful program that was uh, 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 proposed to Maxwell School, and it was a senior leadership training for NGO leaders. Online uh, teacher leadership, um, uh, online le senior leadership program, and I went to the office of the director of the TNGO initiative, and they said, "I want to be involved in this program." Sometimes you need to go and ask for opportunities. If you are not given the opportunity, go and ask for it. I said, "I am an education specialist. I have experience in course design. I, of course, I am ignorant in online course design, but I wanted to learn it because." I, I knew that this is the future of the profession. I wanted to, new, to, to learn new things. I wanted to put something on my CV in that concern, and I wanted to, uh, uh, to benefit from that. A month after that, I was appointed the project manager of this program, and today I am still the project manager of that program, an amazing program. The team members of that program are like, uh, previous uh, CEOs of NGOs in the world, and this uh, has also introduced me to a wonderful network and wonderful experiences. So, if you can, you, you, you're not the type of person who gets uh, offered opportunities, and you cannot ask for opportunities because there are posit uh, there is paucity of opportunities in your uh, area, etc. You can create them. So. If you, uh, you don't have any opportunity uh, uh, in front of you, you can create it. For example, this uh, event is an example of an, uh, of, uh, an, uh, an opportunity created by people. Uh, uh, all right, so Abdul, can you move to the next slide, please? So uh, I have already tackled this. So you say no to, to naysayers. To, you say no to discouraging people, people who don't want you to take up opportunities, people who don't encourage you to take risks. So can we go to the next slide, please? So, yeah. The importance of relationships. I want to tell you the second thing that I felt uh, uh, 
very important in my trajectory is the importance of relationships. Uh, the most wonderful person in my life is my mom. And uh, excuse me if I get a bit emotional when I talk about my mom because it, she is the one, uh, thank you. She is the one who, uh, uh, who gave me the best gift. It is a piece of advice. When I was a child, she used to tell me, treat people with respect. Treat people with kindness. She, do she doesn't speak English, so she said it, عامل الناس بإحسان. So uh, I remember one of the things that also she used to say is, uh, she, sa she used to say, صانع المعروف لا يقع وإذا وقع يجد متكأة. And another say, uh, when I used to come angry of friends to home, uh, she used to say, Ya Ahmed, an yoman. I, I always remember these pieces of advice. She says, even if you get upset of somebody you don't know, maybe this, this person may benefit you one day. And I cannot tell you how many times I, uh, I benefited from people. I, I'm not telling you to be like a person who kisses up and kicks down or uh, be a sycophant and uh, try to uh, please people. I want you to be genuine and be kind to people. This is why as a teacher, I tend to be a person who treats students with respect and kindness. And uh, I think this pays off most of the time. I cannot tell you how many times people I, uh, I treated with respect or kindness, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, paid it back uh, uh, without even uh, me expecting that from them. I can give you many examples. Just uh, Abdu uh, is the tech, t uh, the, the tech guy for this event. And uh, I don't know whether I, has, uh, I have been uh, like treating uh, Abdu with respect and kindness. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> so he's a, per, a person, I, uh, he, he's, one, he's like one of my students. And I, in 2016, I got an idea of Muachat. I, uh, I developed it, and in the United States, if you want to make a logo, you can pay like $10,000, like a huge amount of money. And I reached out to him and to Hsisen. Where's Hsisen? Somewhere, no? He's not here? Okay. So uh, I reached out to them and I said, I want to make a logo and I don't have money for that. So they made the logo for me pro bono, right? So this is the type of how the universe works. If you treat people with respect, if you help people, they will help you back at one time, uh, uh, at, what, uh, at one uh, point of uh, time. So can you go? Uh, uh, right. So uh, this is a quote that I, uh, that I heard from uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And he says, if you do something good and help people out, eventually some portion of this good will come back to you. So this is very true for what happened to me. So uh, 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 when uh, Mark Zuckerberg created fa uh, Facebook, he did not think of creating a company at the first time. He said, I knew that somebody is someday, somebody will create Facebook for the world, but not me. He said, I thought that a company that, ha that has already thousands of engineers and thousands of equipment uh, will be able to create Facebook for the world, but not me. But he, at the beginning, he, he thought of Facebook as a place, a platform for his people, like uh, his, his net immediate network of people to stay connected and share thoughts. And after two or three years from this initiative, then uh, the, uh, Facebook uh, is a very successful company that made him one of the um, uh, richest people in the world. Uh, as I remember from my trajectory, in 2007, uh, in 2006 actually, I uh, was a founding member with a very inspirational uh, leader. Uh, her name is Laura Kirkpatrick Deep. She used to be a teacher at uh, the University of Algiers. And she created, uh, she, uh, with her we created the first uh, English club in uh, Algerian universities. And at that time we did not think of this as a 
uh, a thing that we can put in our CVs to get a scholarship later on or to, to get a job. But we uh, wanted a space, a free space for students to share ideas, to organize events, to, uh, to assert ourselves. So we're, we, we started the first English club and then I started uh, our own English club at ONS Buzria and I presided that club. So the, the, the idea of the club was altruistic. We wanted to create something for people. And later on, this, one, this is one of the things that haunted me in a positive way, the, things that, the, 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 the amount of knowledge and skills and values and attitudes that I learned from this experience is immense. Maybe uh, my leadership has, uh, uh, is 90% uh, is thanks to these kinds of grassroots initiatives that I started with when I was a university student. So this is why I think that the, uh, Anissa and her team uh, 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 will develop a lot of leadership thanks to these kinds of events and initiatives they are organizing. Um, can we uh, move to the next slide? So, uh, do what you are passionate about. I don't want to sound repetitive because this is a thing that uh, the uh, speakers of the morning uh, talked about. So, when you do what you love, and love what you do, you excel. Uh, so after experimenting with many things, I found my passion, that is civil society, uh, non-profit organizations, and education combined, that is civic engagement and uh, citizenship. And I advise you to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to have a clarity of image about your strength, and weaknesses and to know what uh, is your drive, what is your call in life and do that. Uh, so having said that, I don't mean that you don't say no. So uh, my attitude today is that if you uh, ask me for help or ask me for money, I can borrow you money because I cannot say no. I always say yes, don't borrow money from me, please. So. <laughs> Uh, so, but sometimes you need to say no, especially when you have a lot of opportunities, you have to prioritize and know what works for you. Uh, you need sometimes time, you need to be ready for opportunities, but what I uh, uh, think is important is you have to take risks to say yes to opportunities, even if they are out of your comfort zone. Because standing in front of you today is not like something that I enjoy doing. It's something out of my comfort zone, right? So I would rather be sleeping than speaking, right? So, um, uh, so you need to say no sometimes. And next slide. All right, no, uh, yeah, next slide. All right, so this is not clear and uh, fortunately, it's not clear because it's like my objectives. So one of the things that um, also works for me is stating and verbalizing my objectives. So when you see my uh, bedroom uh, in the United States or here in Algeria, it's also always full of flip charts. So I write my objectives. So in this image, uh, this drawing is like me in the middle. And these are my objectives. I want to finish my PhD. I wanted to finish in the, the executive master's of public administration. I wanted to excel in French. I wanted to, uh, to have a good body shape, for example. You can have any objective that you want, right? But I don't want you only to write your objective. Write the skills, uh, the, the sub-objectives, and the sub-objectives of the sub-objectives as well. So, for example, if you want to have good, um, like, good... Um, uh, social habits. You have to be specific. What do you want to... Does it mean like less Facebooking in bed? Does it mean like less spitting and less cussing? Wh whatever. For example, if you want to have a good body shape, what does it mean for you? What are the specific things that you need to do in order to achieve that goal? For example, if you want to be, to, to, to be healthy, to have a, like a fit body, you need, for example, to have like better diet, you need to, to go to the gym, you need to uh, like do some room exercise if you don't have time to go to the gym, etc. So be specific about what you want. And also, I, I remember one of the things that uh, Ahmed uh, uh, was talking about, the SMART goals, so specific, measurable, actionable, I guess, and uh, realizable and timed. 
So you have to uh, link them with time. For example, you say, at the end of March, I want to be this, or I want to achieve that. Even if you, you don't achieve it by, by, by that time, but at least you have like, uh, a sense what you need to do in that period of time. So these are the things that I have in front of me, visual, uh, uh, so, so that I know when I wake up in the morning, I know what I am going to do, right? And also, this is uh, actually not the specific uh, thing, things I need to do, but also what things that I have achieved. So I have also like a sense of progress and also a motivation uh, to, to do more when I see what I have achieved in a period of time. So this is like uh, my stay in the United States. I wanted to do many things, etc. cetera. Um, right, so uh, this is one of the quotes that I like most. And this speaks to what I, uh, uh, what I was uh, to, uh, t t uh, talking about. So uh, Mark Twain once said, uh, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by things you didn't do than things you did do. By the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, explore, uh, catch the trade winds in your sa sails, explore, dream, discover. Because later on, you would regret things you didn't do, not the things you did do. Our culture, I think, runs contrary to what I was saying. When they say, We, we have this culture of like, not saying rather than saying, not doing rather than doing. And I think this is negative. I think we need to change the pattern. It's if, if it is saying the truth or saying uh, the right things, then say them and it will be the golden thing to do. So um, uh, the last thing I want to tell you that the best leaders, the best people are the mistake makers, the risk takers, because if you make mistakes and risk, uh, take the risks, then uh, y uh, sky will be the limit for you because sky is the limit. Thank you so much. Thank you.